if you want to be more successful, you have to do the things are not willing to do. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cabin Checks. I'm your host, Brandon Burns, and today's episode is gonna be a little bit different. Number one, if you haven't been able to tell, uh, I'm in a hotel room right now, and I've gotta keep my emotions under control. I gotta lower my volume. I gotta control my tone here because it is currently 10.05 p.m., uh, and I don't want to get kicked out of this place for being too noisy and recording this video at an ungodly hour, but this was the only time that I had during the day. It's been a crazy jam impact weekend uh, working with Extreme Execution, our certification class uh, with ET out here in Lansing, Michigan. It's been a phenomenal weekend, absolutely transformational for a ton of the attendees. It was so, so good, but it was busy. And that meant that this was the only time that I had to record this video, but I am not complaining. We're gonna make it work. And to be honest with you, I kinda, I kinda vibe with this set. Let me know what you think in the comments. But here's the topic for tonight's video. Five steps to success. I know that that sounds like clickbait. I know that it sounds like an oversimplification, but the reality is if you want to be more successful than 99% of human beings alive on this planet today, all it really means is that you have to do the things that 99% of human beings alive on this planet today are not willing to do, right? And or avoid the mistakes that 99% of human beings alive on this planet make. So it's really, if I could distill success down into two axioms or two principles, it's really number one, don't make the mistakes that most people make. And number two, do make the sacrifices that most people don't. Like it's literally that simple. Don't make the same mistakes that everybody else makes and do make the sacrifices that almost nobody makes. If you can do those two things by default, fault, you're going to be in the top 1% of whatever it is that you want. You're going to be in the top 1% income. You're going to be in the top 1% in your education. You're going to be the top 1% in your family and your fulfillment and your mission and your purpose. You're going to be top 1% in, in, in anything that you want to be in top 1% in your fitness, your health, all of that. If you just do those two things. So I want to break it down for you uh, in a little bit more of a step-by-step -step fashion, right? And I'm going to show you how those two principles or those two axioms live in each of the five steps. So let's start with step number one. Step number one in the five steps to success is don't do anything stupid. And I know that it's like, oh my God, thank you for this revolutionary idea right? But hear me out. Most people take themselves out of the game. Most people are done before they even start. Most people never pass go. Most people never collect $200. Most people genuinely don't have a shot. And I know that that sounds super harsh, but here's the truth. If you make one of the big mistakes that takes you out of the game, you don't really have too many chances to win from there. Now, I'm not saying that you can't turn your life around. I'm not saying that you can't make a change, make an adjustment, and all of a sudden everything changes for you. And then you have a completely new outlook on life and you have a completely new trajectory, that's possible if you reinvent yourself, but it's only possible if you stop making these mistakes, right? What are these mistakes I'm talking about? Getting hooked on alcohol. I'm not telling you you can't have a drink every once in a while, but if you get hooked on that stuff, you get hooked on alcohol and you all of a sudden every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Wednesday because it's close enough to Friday, right? You're drinking and now the next week, two weeks, your, your brain is foggy, showing up late stuff, you're not getting good sleep. You're shooting yourself in the foot before you even have a chance, right? Same thing with drugs. There, there's been people that they do drugs one singular time and boom, through their entire life away because they got hooked that one time they tried it. It was just a little experiment. It was just a little fun. They tried it once through their entire life away. Now, again, I'm not like the anti-fun guy. You want to smoke a little bit, like do your thing. But I'm telling you, if you can just avoid doing the things that detract from your success, I'll never forget ET said, when you start to strive for a certain level of success, you stop asking what's wrong with something and you start asking what's right with it. Like you stop asking dumb questions like, well, what's wrong with a drink every now and then? It's a stupid question. It's a stupid question because you're trying to see how much you can get away with. That's the wrong mentality. You should be trying to see how much better you could get. You should be trying to see how close to your potential could you possibly get. Or you should be trying to see how much more could you do? How much more could you become? How much more could you grow? And so you gotta stop asking these dumb questions like, 
Well, what's wrong with it? You're looking for an excuse to do something that you know is bad for you. And you know that subconsciously. Like deep down, you know that. So just stop looking for the excuse and stop doing the stupid stuff. Like just stop doing the stuff that you know is going to detract from your success. Stop doing the stuff that you know is going to make you less than who you're capable of being, right? So drugs, alcohol, sugar, porn, like all the stuff that just gets to people, that people get addicted to, right? Don't do any of that. Crime, like don't commit a crime, it's gonna put you in jail for a long time. Like again, it sounds remedial, but I'm telling you, you can't go to steps two through five if you can't tackle this one. And most of us, if we're being honest, again, for some of us, it's different things. Choose your poison, pick your drug. Like some of us have different vices, but I'm telling you, if you can just get past not doing anything destructive, you're gonna be ahead of 90% of human beings alive on the planet right now. All right, so that's number one. Number two, is I need you to get the basics right. So once we've discontinued any destructive behavior, the second step in this thing is to just get the basics right. What does that mean? It means drink enough water every day. It means sleep enough every day. It means eat the right kind of foods, right? It means work out consistently. It means take care of yourself, meaning what? It means have a spiritual practice. It means meditate, pray, whatever it is that you wanna do, or right? whatever you believe in, whatever's in accordance to that, but do something that takes care of you before you go out there and work. I hate how the hustle culture of entrepreneurship that we're in right now, at the time of recording this in 2023, I think that it almost glorifies hard work so much that we skip the prerequisites. It's like you don't go to college and go straight to a 401 level class. You gotta take the prerequisites first. And so in life and in success, the prerequisite is taking care of you. You can't possibly work 70 hours a week consistently and, and survive and not have a mental breakdown, right? Unless you've taken care of you first. A buddy of mine, uh, his name is Doc Jacobs. He says, fill your fountain. He says, you ever look at a fountain, it's multi-tiered. And so the second tier of the fountain cannot possibly get filled unless the first tier is overflowing and the water spills over to the second tier. The third tier can't get filled unless the second tier is overflowing. Unless you are overflowing, your business, your relationship, your health and fitness, all the things that you care about cannot possibly be filled, cannot possibly grow to fruition until you have been filled, until you have taken care of yourself, right? So get the basics right, take care of you, so that you can then go and leverage who you are in the pursuit of success. But you're not gonna be able to do that until you take care of you first. I'll be honest with you all, the first two, if you can just get those, almost nobody can do those two things. Like the people who can do step one and then they just grind, 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 they burn out and they have their five minutes of fame and then you never hear from them again. They blow up on social media and then they go away or they, they get hot for a second but then they never build any real lasting success. It's because they didn't do number two or it's because they didn't do number one for a little while, they got some success, then they went back to doing number one. Then they got self-indulgent and self-destructive or they kept not doing that stuff but then when they started getting some success, they kept doubling down, doubling down, doubling down. Then they burnt themselves out because they were work too hard without filling themselves up first without taking care of the basics. If you can just do these first two steps, I promise you, success is almost inevitable. Like you would have to work to not be somewhat successful. I'm not saying that you're gonna be a billionaire. I'm not saying that you're gonna have everything you ever wanted. You're gonna have a, a eight pack. I'm not saying that you're gonna be a, a some sort of CrossFit beast or anything like that. Like whatever it is, that it is that you want, again, health, fitness, relationships, financial, spiritual, like all the pieces of life that are important. I'm not saying that you're going to be able to go all the way as far as you could take it with just those first two steps, but I'm telling you that you're gonna live a good life with just those first two steps. I'm telling you that you will automatically be ahead of 95% of the population with just those two steps. I'm telling you that you would not suffer if you just did those two things, right? Number three is I need you to get specific information. And what I mean by that is once you've taken care of the first two, now you have qualified yourself to even begin to attempt to accomplish a specific goal. Do me a favor, don't set no specific goals until you've done one and two, steps one and two. Stop being self-indulgent and self-destructive and take care of the basics of your health and your personal development and filling your cup before you try and pour out into it. What business do you have setting some goal, like I'm gonna make a million dollars by, like you read Think and Grow Rich, now you say, okay, I'm gonna make a million dollars by this date, by doing these things in exchange for the million dollars. Why do you think you even qualify for 
a goal like that when you haven't taken care of the basics? Why do you think you qualify to even attempt to have a goal like that when it's clear that you don't respect yourself based on the destructive behaviors that you exhibit? Like that don't even make sense. You can't go chase a specific goal until you've done the prerequisites, right? So again, take care of the first two first, then we get specific knowledge. So once we've got the foundation built, once we've taken our prerequisite courses, now we say, what do I want to accomplish? Is it a financial goal? Is it a spiritual goal? Is it a physical health goal? Is it a relationship goal? Figure out what it is that you want and then go get knowledge that is specific to that. Stop watching YouTube videos under the moniker of self-education. Like stop watching content and wasting your life away. And I know it's ironic because I'm making content right now, but for real, stop watching content and just wasting away the time that you have, your most valuable, most precious asset, just because you get like a little high off learning. Like for real, in the entrepreneurial space that we are in right now, I swear people just get off on saying, oh yeah, I follow this guy too. I learned about this, this, and this. Oh yeah, I've totally read that book. I, like you just wanted to feel smart. You didn't actually want to make progress. I don't care if you feel smart. I want you to make progress. I want you to get something. Like you should have something to show for you going through this system, right? Okay, so what does that mean? It means stop just getting general knowledge and get specific knowledge. Get intentional and get deliberate knowledge on exactly what it is that you want to accomplish, right? So it's not enough to say, I want to make a million dollars a year. It's you've got to say, I want to make a million dollars a year through a coaching and consulting business, specifically in the fitness niche. I'm gonna, and not even just the fitness niche, because there's a million different things. I'm going to help uh, single moms lose the postpartum weight, like, right? Like you gotta get specific and then you can say, okay, what kind of nutrition plans work for this group of people? What kind of workout plans work for this group of people? What kind of marketing seems to work for this group of people? And now we can actually start making progress. So step three is get specific knowledge. Step four is execute on that knowledge every single day. So what does that look like? It means that knowledge for knowledge sakes, right? This is where we put up Ty Lope. You're in my garage, right? Knowledge for the sake of knowledge. If your strategy and your plan is to go win Jeopardy, and that's how you're gonna you're gonna blow up. Cool. But anything other than that, it's useless. It's taking up space. It's you are a mental pack rat, right? Knowledge is only useful when it is exercised. Knowledge is only useful when it is put into action, when it is put into play, when it is leveraged to get an outcome, right? So step four is take whatever information that you're learning and execute. And I'm not saying that you have to take some YouTube video that you watched and execute every single thing from start to finish in the next 24 hours. But what I am saying is take the most manageable bite-sized chunk of what you just learned from whatever source, audiobooks, school, classes, certifications, YouTube, like whatever it is that you just learned, take the most approachable bite-sized chunk that you can execute within the next hour and a half and go do it. And then take the next most manageable chunk and then go do that in the next 24 hours. Then the next thing in the next 48, 72, and so on and so forth, right? And you just eventually, because here's, here's what this looks like, right? What you're gonna do is take that goal that you have have and you're going to grab it from where it's at, which is the future, and you yank it into the present moment. Well, how do you do that? You take the steps that it takes to get to that goal and you pull them as close to the present moment as you possibly can. Like literally imagine this. If you're here and your goal is here, how would I pull my goal closer to my current location in time, in space time, right? Well, I would probably figure out, okay, here's checkpoint A, checkpoint B, checkpoint C, check, and so on and so forth of how I can actually get this thing to become a, a reality and manifest that, right? And so what I'm going to do is say, okay, how can I get this done in the fastest amount of time? How can I get to checkpoint A in the fastest amount of time possible? You might say, okay, well, I could do this, 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 and this over the next week. And that's good. But if you can say, well, how can I pull that closer to me? How can I make that happen in the next day instead of the next week? How can I make it happen in the next hour, in the next minute, in the next second? Push yourself to think about these sorts of things differently. And what that does is it literally, if this, if this path from A to B or A to Z is gonna take you a year and you start to think about it the way that I just described, now it takes a week, you just grabbed that goal and pulled it into the present moment, right? So that's what the execution phase looks like. Step five is rinse and repeat. Every day means every day. The t-shirt's coming soon. I'm known for saying every day means every day, right? Every single day you repeat the process. You never get to stop focusing on not indulging in those destructive habits. You never get to stop focusing on not taking care of the basics. You never get to stop focusing on getting the right specific knowledge. You never get to stop focusing on execution and you never get like, that's the cycle. And so every single day you wake up, you go through those four steps. 
And step five is just a reminder that the key to success truly is consistency. If you are even following that process in an incredibly mediocre way, like you're barely following it, but you do it for 10 years, you will be top 1% in whatever you apply yourself towards. I guarantee it, I guarantee it. Because the only true force that is known to accomplish pretty much anything worldly is effort over time. Effort over time, that's it, consistency. So that's my little five step system to success. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you got something from it. I hope that you learned something and I hope that you find it valuable enough to share with others. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, rate the video, share it with all the YouTube stuff, all the, the social media stuff. You already know, you'll probably know it better than me. I appreciate you watching this. It means the world to me that people would spend their time listening to me sit in a hotel room at dang near 10.30 at night at some random spot in Michigan just uh, waxing deep on the way that I believe life ought to be lived. It means the world to me that you'd listen to this. It means even more that you would take some of this information and, and go change and transform your life with it. So I appreciate you for watching this. Leave a comment below if you have anything to add to this conversation. I would love to discuss with you. And I will see you on the next episode of Cabin Checks. Peace.